everyone, it's John from WhatUp, and welcome back to another video. Now, thanks to our friends over at WattSeries.com, we have some news for today, Wheel of Time Wednesday. Now, this includes not only a casting, but a possible look how Evienda may be introduced in Season 2, which may spoil another character. So if you're new to the channel and you don't know what we do here, we cover Wheel of Time show news, so anything and everything to do with the Sony and Amazon production that wrapped filming Season 2 just a few short weeks ago, that's what we talk about here. So if you like that sort of thing, make sure you subscribe and like the video. Now, before we get into the actual video, I do have to give a spoiler warning because we're going to speculate a fair bit and talk just a bit about the books as well as the show. So, spoiler warning, in this video we're talking about certain elements of Season 2 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show. So you haven't watched the entire first season of the show as well as read the first three books of the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, that's The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, and The Dragon Reborn, be forewarned, I'm going to ruin minor plot points, character arcs, and a few other things. You've been warned. All right, let's get on to the video. All right, so we're going to talk about a couple of different articles from wantseries.com. Um, and I want to start this by saying something that it, I've done no checking on. So this is this is, this is is just me saying this, but I'm probably not wrong. There's no fact checking for this whatsoever. And this is, I would guess at this point that wantseries.com has been responsible for releasing more information than the showrunner, the cast, the crew, and the official accounts for the show. Now, I might be wrong, but I bet you I'm not wrong by much. So, like I said earlier, if you folks don't know who they are, if you haven't checked them out yet, when you're done the video, go over to their page, read the articles, bookmark it, comment on it, engage it, share it around, tell your friends. They are a fantastic source of Wheel of Time news, and they're good friends of mine, and they're fantastic people. All right, so um, we're going to talk just a bit about this first article. It's linked down below. Um, it's about a casting. So if you remember a few short weeks ago, Sony and Amazon released a teaser for season two. We'll call it a teaser. It's about 30 seconds long. It showcased a couple of different things. Some props, the stunt crew performing some stunts, uh, some actors in the desert, um, and a table read. Now, the table read was pretty interesting because uh, we got to see them in what appeared to be the exact same place that the table read for episode one and two way back when, about a year before the first season dropped when they released that video. So that was really very neat. Um, and there was an actress at this table read that no one recognized. Now, she wasn't cast, uh, hasn't been announced by the show. Um, and there was a whole lot of speculation on Reddit, on the discords, on Twitter, on Facebook, on who she could be. Now, the, the leading contender was Kathy Bates, because let's face it, the shot in the actual table read looks a lot like Kathy Bates, but there's no way Kathy Bates was joining the, uh, the cast wheel of time. It just wasn't going to happen. Um, but one of WattSeries.com's readers recognized the actress, wrote in, and... They did some sleuthing and they found out that, yeah, yeah, this is the actress in question. This is really very neat. Now, this actress is, and I'm probably going to mispronounce the name, and I do apologize if I do, uh, Te Wiata. Now, she is a London-born New Zealand actress that's uh, been acting since 1986, and she's been in a ton of different things. So when I say she's an actress, she's also a writer, um, a musician, a comedian, uh, stage, film, um, TV, you name it. She's done it all in her in her career. She has an absolute wealth of knowledge and experience behind her. And she really looks like, as soon as I saw her, she was headcanon for a certain character, which is kind of neat because in the WattSeries.com article, they also talked about a social media post she put up last December, so December 2021, of her in Prague with an owl named Falzo. Now, what character has an owl that we know of that has a pet owl, at least in the first couple of books of the series that we get to get to know a little bit? That's Varen Mathwin, the Aes Sedai of the Brown Aja that factors in pretty heavily in the book series. She's a pretty main character. She's definitely the top three character, one of the top three characters I love in the series. Um, and I've said this actually in a recent thing on Twitter, and, and I got roasted pretty bad for it, but Gawain's my favorite character. Fael's my second, and Varen would be number three. Um, don't hate me because Varen's number three. She, she's awesome, but... I like the two just a bit more. Now, this is really, really very neat because we knew that Varen would have to be cast in the second season because she's such an influence and such a part of some major storylines in the books. And Rave Judkins had actually said a couple of different times that he wouldn't cut her, that she would definitely be in the show. Um, and we knew that she would probably have to be introduced in the second season. We just didn't know how. Now, my guess is she's probably going to be introduced either at the tower with uh, Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve when they're in the tower scenes in the first couple of episodes because she appears to be in the first episode or two. Or maybe Moraine and Lam will meet her on the road uh, when they go to find out what to do about Moraine's shield. Now, I'm saying that in quotation marks because it hasn't really been released yet that she's shielded officially, although that's pretty much the general consensus in the fandom that at the end of episode 8, she wasn't stilled. 
she she was shielded so that's 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 my guess anyway so let me know what you folks think about tay as uh as varen do you, do you like her as as varen uh, and how do you think varen is going to factor into the first season of the show well and i actually no, not the first season the second season i'm not even going to edit that out i'm just that that's a mistake in my point we'll, we'll leave that in though so let me know in the comments down below what you folks think of uh tay as uh as part of the show how do you think she's going to fit in all right, so now we're going to talk about this second article that watchseries.com posted. I've linked it again down below in the description box. Folks, go over there and please check that out when you're done the video. Um, but before we talk about this article, I do want to mention one thing that I probably should have said earlier in the video. This is not official news. So Sony and Amazon didn't release the Varen casting. They didn't release this. Uh, the scenes we're going to talk about with Avienda. Um, this is unofficial stuff. So take it with a very, very small grain of salt. Like I said earlier, watsers.com has never been wrong about anything, but I do have to mention because it's not official that it's not official, just so you folks know. All right, that out of the way, um, this is arguably even more exciting than the Varen casting. Um, some people may disagree, but this gives us a pretty good insight into what's going to happen in season two with a certain character and maybe, just maybe another character that is probably cut, which is possible. I mean... We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so this article talks about an audition tape. Now, this audition tape is put up by uh, an actor uh, when they read for a role. Now, this is not unusual in any way, shape, or form. These audition tapes are shared over a number of different places on the internet because, let's face it, as an actor and actress, you don't get every role you audition for, and the audition tapes that you do make for these roles are a really good resource to showcase your acting skills for other jobs. So they're usually posted, and they can be very easily found, as we saw with season one. Now, before season one aired, a lot of uh, actors and actresses that played the role of uh, Gwen and Rand, they read for different roles, um, different scenes, and they posted their audition tapes online. Everyone got a hold of them, and we kind of picked them apart. And some of the names were changed, some of the places were changed, but Oddly, and this is this was I thought was really strange. The audition tapes were pretty much almost 100% accurate when it came to the show. So the spirit of the scenes was not changed. In some cases, the dialogue was exact, which which is insane to me. But who knows? So I do want to again say a little disclaimer that this is not official. However, there's a pretty good chance because of what we see in the season one that these scenes are probably in the show. They're they're probably there because we've seen it with season one, unless they did a complete 180 and they gave them fake scripts to read, which is, again, also possible. But either way, it's pretty interesting we're going to talk about it. So they talked about the scenes. They transcribed them because the videos were taken down, um, but not before they get a chance to write them all out. So we're going to talk just about these two scenes that are in this. Um, so this first scene, basically, it's, uh, it's Evienda and Perrin, and they're talking about... A couple of different things. So Avienda says, My name is Avienda of the Nine Valley Sept of the Tardad Ale. My water is yours. Parent says, I am Parent of uh, Ibera. Avienda says, You don't swing the sword badly. So that's weird to me because Parent doesn't normally use a sword. He has an axe or a hammer in the book series. Um, I can't remember really many instances or e even even a big instance of him using a sword in the books. I may be wrong. Um, if that's a very specific thing, there might've been a scene somewhere where he picked one up and just used it because it was handy. I don't know, but I don't think that he actually ever did really use a sword in the books. So I'm thinking this might've been an opportunistic thing. He didn't have his ax with him. He didn't have a hammer with him that he would normally carry around. Um, he grabbed something off someone else or something nearby and used it in a fight. So, so far we know that Avienda has seen him fight because she's complimenting his fighting skills. Um, Parent says, I thought your people never left the waste. So he knows what an Aiel is. He knows that Avienda is Aiel. Uh, Avienda says, Wetlanders call it the waste. It is the threefold land, a shaping stone, a testing ground to prove our worth and a punishment for the sin. Parent says, what sin? Avienda says, no one remembers. It was so long ago. Parent says, where will you go now? Avienda says, where you go, Wetlander? You're my... And then it says two unknown words in a row is an unpaid debt. You saved my life, so I owe you my shelter. It's not a lover, though I wouldn't be opposed. She laughs. Don't worry, Perrin Ibera. I will not attack you in a fit of lust. So where do we go now? So um, this is kind of interesting because this mirrors <laughs> another scene from the books where Perrin releases Gowl. Now, Gowl is an Aiel that was in a cage that was put there by some hunters from the Horn. Uh, hunters for the horn rather um and 
Perrin releases him and he says he's indebted to him and then they become fast friends. They kind of hang out throughout the book series. Uh, kind of a little bit of a, you know, I'd, I'd love to see a, a bromance between them on screen or or like even like a little bit of a buddy comedy going on between the two of them because they, they are similar and different in many different ways. And they are some of the most enjoyable scenes I read in the books. This sort of seems like Evienda is taking Gowell's place, although... I, I really don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Now, this goes back to me saying that I think they might be cutting some big stuff. So I was told quite some time ago that season two would be even more heavy in the changes. So season one had a lot of changes. We all know that. But season two will have even more changes while still mirroring the story, which makes sense if, if Rafe Judkins, Sony and Amazon are shooting for eight seasons, which... It appears to be that right now they're not going to change the, the the format as far as we know. It's still going to be, as far as we know, eight episodes, about an hour each. Um, we haven't heard anything different to that fact. That's not a lot of time to adapt 14 books, a prequel novel, the companion, all the extra stories, all the other stuff. They're going to be cutting major things out. They're going to streamline a lot of stuff. We're not going to see some fan favorite characters my guess we may see some amalgamated characters which we've already seen in the first season and we've heard about for castings for season two um so them cutting gowl little strange to me um so maybe just maybe they're not going to but stranger things have happened let me know in the comments down below what you think do you think they're cutting gowl and do you think avienda will take his spot uh as as being around Perrin at least for uh parts of the second season now we're going to go on to the second scene here uh this is a second scene um and Perrin starts out by saying i killed her by accident our village was attacked so he's obviously talking about uh lila uh his wife that he uh killed in the very first episode of the season uh, and there was a lot of theories about how that would factor in how it would go on um but we really don't know if what's happening we know that throughout the entire first season Perrin was very uh despondent uh he very traumatized he didn't really have much to say very quiet and it all went back to him killing his wife now I didn't like that choice and a lot of other people including Brandon Sanderson didn't really like the choice of them killing Lila off and um because as Perrin as a character he loves very deeply and to me that would crush him and completely ruin him forever unless unless maybe he just wasn't quite as in love with her as he would be with Fael later on because let's face it if something happened to Fael he would burn the world down um and uh himself with it so a strange choice to me but I, I, I digress. So Avienda says, did she die well? Did she choose to fight to protect her home, those she loved? Then trust she died well. Parent says, I want you to beat me what the other women did to you. So this seems to be that Perrin witnessed Avienda being punished uh, or uh, meeting, meeting her toe in some way, shape, or form to her spear sisters. Um, and that kind of makes sense because... If we're going to introduce the Aiel, we're going to have to start explaining a lot of different things. Their honor system, what they do, how they meet their honor, how things work. Um, and in the book series, there was a lot of instances of Wetlanders trying to emulate uh, Aiel to be like them. Uh, so Perrin probably thinks this is a good way to make himself feel just a bit better about, uh, about what happened. Uh, Avienda says, it's dishonorable to remind me. Remember that. Perrin says, sorry, but please, I need it. Avienda says... Uh, Avienda hits him. Does that help? No, because you're a wetlander, not an Aiel. To be beaten isn't punishment, and you're dishonoring your wife by grieving her. Death comes for us all. We can only choose how to face it when it comes. Lila chose. She woke up from her dream, but you will not let her live. You want to stop grieving? Then throw it away. She holds out a ring. Uh, Perrin says, you have your sister's knife. Avienda says, that is a tool, not a keepsake to mourn. Focus on those who are with us still. So this seems to be like they're having some very deep conversation. Um, Perrin probably handed over the wedding ring. They were talking about a few different things. Um, and Avienda has told him about her family. So they're obviously bonding. This goes back to the last scene where Gowell might have been cut. Uh, and a lot of this really deep introspective, introspective, I can't pronounce that word. A lot of deep talk between them happened. Um, and it, it's probably going to do a couple of different things first they're probably going to use it to sort to start to heal Perrin's character so he gets a little bit more character building that was a huge huge complaint of a lot of people for season one that they never really built his character at all he didn't really do much he just kind of was in uh shock most of the first season um so this is a way of him talking getting his feelings out maybe starting to move past it a bit um 
And the second thing is, is they're probably gonna use it as a teaching tool to teach the audience about the IEL, about their, like I said earlier, their honor system, how they work, um, and about the backstories of a lot of the IEL. Now, what's really interesting to note is the watchseries.com article um, mentioned that the Wolf Dogs were seen filming in Dakla. Now, I probably pronounced that wrong. It's in Morocco, is in May, some of the last shots they did. That's that Waygate, uh, I, I don't know if you folks remember it or not, that was out near the water. Um, so all the sandy beaches and stuff in the water. Um, there was an Aiel on set at that time, or at least somebody in Aiel costume, the very tall person next to them. Uh, Watserious.com speculated that might have been Perrin and Avienda, uh, and that's where these scenes possibly could take place. So this could be the tail end of the season. So Avienda may not be introduced until episode 5, 6, 7, or 8, because let's face it, that's those episodes they were shooting at that time. So we're looking at the last half of the season. Um, so we may not get to see till then. And this might be prior to the Battle of Falme. Remember, they don't have to film everything in complete order. They've filmed the Battle of Falme before these scenes at that Waygate. Um, but this could be them taking the Waygate into the waste. That's a possibility as well. Just because it's near water doesn't mean they're going to showcase the water. They could take the Waygate um, out to the waste, and that's where they end the second season. Them appearing in the waste. Um, it's possible. Anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts on down below in the comments. I'm really interested to, to know what you guys think. I want to hear your speculation on what these two scenes mean. Do you think they're going to show up 100% in the second season? If I had to bet money on it, I would because it happened already. And let's face it, Sony and Amazon, when they, they, they tend to do something once, they tend to do it a couple of different times. So I'm guessing that the scenes they're sending out for second season for people to read for these parts, they're probably probably pretty accurate. At least they were for the first season, so I imagine they would be for the second. Uh, do you think they're going to be accurate? What do you think about the possibility of Evienda and Perrin kind of teaming up a little bit there, healing through some things? working out some stuff, and Avi ended up possibly taking the part of Gal. Now, one more little thing I want to mention for the end of it. In no way, shape, or form is there any information that Gal might be cut from the show. Uh, he could quite possibly be there. These are just two scenes. We really don't know. It's just a lot of people are already speculating on this, and this article came out, oh, just a couple of hours ago. So I had to mention it. Anyway, let me know what you folks think down below. Thank you so very much for sticking with me here to the very end, and here's to many more.